Welcome to the next session of ANSYS Workbench Tutorials. In this session, we are analyzing composite walls with insulation for transient thermal analysis. Let's start by double clicking on transient thermal. We'll first go to engineering data, engineering data sources. general materials now structural steel is already chosen so i'll use this material and i'll choose another material as a copper alloy these two will be the material for the two walls now for insulation let me use air as the material so i'll choose air When we'll check here, this question mark is shown, which means I need to give some more properties. So I just go to isotropic thermal conductivity and give this value as 0 0.01 such that the conduction of heat is very less and that's how it will act as an insulation. If you want, you can also create a new material over here and call it as insulation and give the same property for thermal conductivity. I am just leaving the name as air. You can give any name. You can call it as insulation as well. So I'll go back to project and update project. Next, I'll go to geometry, right click, new design modular geometry, units, millimeter, xy, look at. I'll go to sketching and choose circle. Since it's a cylindrical wall, I'll go to dimension and give it diameter 80 mm. I'll extrude it for 25 mm. Generate. Now on this face, I'll create a new plane. Generate. Look at. I'll go to sketching again and choose circle. Let me give the dimension as 60 mm. I'll extrude this. Instead of add material, I'll cut material. The direction has got reversed. Generate. Next, I'll create a new sketch on this plane itself. I'll go to look at, choose circle. I'll give this dimension as 60 mm. Now I'll go to extrude. Instead of add material, I'm going to add frozen. The direction has to be reversed. Generate. So you can see I've created another material here. Now I'll go to the back side of the cylinder. On this face, I'll create a new plane. Generate. Sketching. I'll draw a circle. Now this will define the thickness of the insulation part. So I'll give it dimension. See the value is 50 mm. Now I'll click on extrude. You can see the inner circle has been highlighted. I am going to cut material. It will be reversed. Generate. The material has been cut but it doesn't seem to. But it actually has got cut. So I will go to this plane again. And I will create a new sketch. In the sketch 5, I am going to draw a circle. The dimension will be that of the circle which I just created. That is 50 mm. Again, I will go to extrude. Add material. And the direction has to be reversed. 
jet. So now I think you can see that initially the material over here at the center was actually cut, which was not cement too because of the add frozen effect. But now I think you can see clearly that there are three cylinders here. You can actually see to the left. In the tree, there are three parts, three bodies, outer, central, and middle one. So there are three of them. So this completes the geometry. Next, I'll go to model and double click on it. Now I'll go to geometry. The first solid, outer one, say the structural steel. The middle one I'm going to give insulation and the central one I'm going to change the material as copper alloy. So this is the material allocation for the cylinder. Next I'll go to mesh. Sizing I'll change it to fine and update. Here if you want you can make this mesh better by right clicking here and inserting method you can select the entire solid and change the method to tetrahedrons so you can see the mesh here on this entire body Now I'll go to analysis settings, right click, insert, convection. I want to insert convection on this surface, this inner cylinder. So I'll just go to the central solid and suppress it for some time. So that this surface gets exposed, I can select the space. And say the film coefficient is... 15. I'll go back to the solid and unsuppress the body so that it is visible again. In analysis settings, I'm going to insert convection on this face. Apply. Say the film coefficient is 12 watt per mm square degree Celsius. Now, in this, you can add more factors by going to analysis settings and inserting some temperature by inserting some radiation value I am not inserting anything more I am just going to the initial temperature and say the initial temperature for this body is 500 degrees Celsius also I will go to analysis settings and number of steps say I choose as 15 that is the entire analysis is going to run for 15 seconds now I'll go to solution, right click, insert thermal temperature. I want to see the temperature for the entire body. So what will be the temperature variation on the entire body because of this insulation and because of the convection factors that we have added. That's what we can see. So we'll just solve it and check the solution now. You can see here, this is the variation of temperature over the entire body. Next, we will right click and insert total heat flux. Also, we will insert directional heat flux and X is the direction along which we want to see the heat flux over the body. I'll go to solution and solve once again. This is the total heat flux over the body. This is considering the x, y and the z direction. You can click here and you can see the variation of heat flux over time. For temperature also you can see how it is varying with respect to time. You can see here. 
you showing the entire temperature variation here. And let's go to the direction of heat flux. This is the heat flux over the x direction. So when you have an insulation at the center, obviously the heat generated at the center will not be transferred to the last end. But only because of convection, whatever heat is lost to the body, it will be lost. But conduction cannot take place between the central solid and the outer one because there is a middle insulation layer. Also, if you want, you can try a variation of keeping the insulation at the end. At that time, you will see that the heat from the center to the second body is transferred, but it cannot go to the ambience because there is an insulation at the outer end. So, you can try some variations with this insulation and cylinders. You can add more cylinders and also check. You can try with various types of material. You can just uncheck the minimum value here and see the direction heat flux with respect to the time along the x-axis. This is all about the transient heat transfer with respect to composite cylinders and insulation material added to it. So with this I end the session. I hope you have understood how to analyze composite cylinders with insulation. If you have any doubt, please write to me in the comment section. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe to the channel. Hit the bell icon for latest video updates. See you in the next session. Thank you.